Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on My Hero Academia, the first of two OVAs. So, it's been about a year since I have watched anything related to My Hero Academia. I, I watched seasons one through four kind of on my own with my brother before I started this channel. And then when season five came out, I watched it and reacted to it. It was a lot of fun. Um, did some manga comparisons. My Hero Academia is one of the only series I think I will watch on this channel where I have kept up with the manga. So I do know manga spoilers, but it's kind of fun because like with season five, they rearranged things, they changed some things. It's cool to see some of those moments animated and seeing them acted out. So it was fun to talk about. And so I'm excited to get into season six this October, but I saw they were doing two OVAs and I was like, okay, I wanna watch some OVAs before we get into October. And all I know about them is that one is involving the hero agency with Endeavor and Todoroki and Bakugo and Deku, which I liked that part of the manga, so that part is exciting. Um, and then the other part is that there's a baseball game. So I don't know which is which, honestly. I don't know if I'm watching the baseball one here first or the agency one, so that'll be a fun surprise. But it's funny because back when Jujutsu Kaisen had their baseball filler episode, um, it wasn't really filler, it was in the manga, but supposedly, but um, back then I had not started watching Ace of the Diamond yet and so I didn't know anything about baseball and I was like, oh, that was fun. But now that I've been watching Ace of the Diamond for like a year and reading the manga, I know more about baseball. And so I'm like, oh, so this will be fun. If it's the baseball one, I'll be able to like pick apart like the positions and talk about that. So that'll be really cool. And then um, if it's not, then we'll just do that next week. So uh, they're each 24 minutes, so I wanted to split them up. I figured they were different enough. They need to be their own separate OVA, so I'm excited about that. But yeah, it's been a while since I've looked at anything My Hero Academia related other than the manga, which <laughs> if you're a manga reader, you're having a great time. I can tell you that without spoiling anything. So I, I am really excited for season six because some of my favorite stuff in the manga I think will be covered in this season. And I'm really hoping that Bones does it justice. Uh, the fact that they don't have a movie to work on right now, that they can focus solely on the season, has me excited. I've not watched the preview, though, for it. I'm like, I'm going to see it in like a month anyway. It's okay. So we'll go from there. But I'm pretty excited to watch it, y'all. And I hope you all are, too. So we won't waste any more time. I'm ready to go and see which one it is. And just kind of go from there and see fun My Hero Academia shenanigans. What more could we ask for? So we're gonna start My Hero Academia, uh, the first OVA, and we're gonna do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Okay, that was not what I expected at all. No, even for a baseball one, I was like, okay, we're in baseball. I will say this before we get into this. I this was really cute, and and the the right before the third act, the part where the part where they had no catcher left, and it was just the, an orca tossing the ball and nothing happened, and they were just doing it to get Shoji around, or Toji around. At that point, I lost it because that's my type of humor. Like, it's just so absurd, but it's like cleverly absurd. I'm like, they know exactly what they're doing. I, that part got me. I was like, oh, that's great. But I will be honest. I feel like if you looked at, I'm gonna put a picture up here. If you looked at the preview, the key visual for this, uh, this Koshin OVA, you may have been misled a little bit because I was fully expecting, um, I was fully expecting like like Deku and Bakugo. I was expecting class 1A and class 1B against each other. I was expecting that kind of game. Not this. This was not what I was expecting, which is fine. Any chance that Fat Gum and Kirishima can shine, I'm all for and Tamaki because I love them to, I love them dearly. And Mount Lady and Kamui Woods are like a, a ship that I'm really happy with. So I'm happy that they had some time to shine in this, but it was not what it was promoted to be. So I'm really curious if people commented on that, if they were like, oh, I thought this was gonna be like Deku and them playing ball, and it was not. So that's interesting if people, I'm curious to know in your comments down below if you had expected that based on that key visual going into this and then how that impacted what you thought of it. It was really cute. I That part got me, which is fine, because I'm all about the characters we don't normally see getting screen time, getting screen time. It's a big ensemble cast. And it can't all just be, can't just all be Todoroki and Bakugo and Deku. But at the same time, I'm like, I would have liked to have seen them and the interactions, like Ochako wasn't here, Ida wasn't here, 
um, Invisible Girl wasn't here. It's really just the characters that we, we know of, but we don't usually get a lot of screen time with, which was fine. Like Vine's there, Seto's there, Kami Woods, uh, Mount Lady. Mount Lady without her mask on is so crazy. Like I never see her without a mask, so that's crazy. And then like the fact that um, Kaminari and uh, Jiro were on the same team with, with Shoji, that was good. Um, I liked that a lot with Gang Orca. And then they were on there. And then of course Tetsu Tetsu, like the team with Tetsu Tetsu, Kirishima, Fat Gum, Tamaki, like it's wonderful. I I love that Aizawa did not want to be there. <laughs> he just, he was like, and at the end of the day, when they have the actual villain attack, President Mike sticks around to, to commentate and they leave Aizawa to take care of the field report. I'm like, that seems about right. That seems about right. I love, I just imagine Aizawa was like, I thought we were going out to get gelato and have a date. And President Mike's like, after this. It still baffles me that like President Mike's VA is the same one as um, Iwizumi from Haikyuu. I'm like, wow. It just baffles me. I'm like, how is it the same voice actor? Um, but yeah, Tetsu Tetsu and Mines. I always forget about him. And then Sugar Man. And we got Tail Man. And then the Beast. I'm, I'm sad we didn't get to see more with the Beast. I really wanted to see more with him. Tamaki is me at every sports game. I Not that I don't enjoy I like watching sports games. I like watching sports games. But if you put me on the field, like PE in high school, was I was Tamaki up against like the back wall being like, please let this get over. I, I hated sports in high school. I was like, I can't play. I'm not coordinated. I am the last person to get picked for dodgeball. It's not fun. <laughs> like You don't want me on your team. You will regret those decisions. So I am Tamaki 100%. But yeah. So I I'm, am, I wish that we would have gotten more with like the actual baseball pragmatics. I feel like it's good timing that this is coming out right around the time that Koshin is happening in Japan. It seems very timely and that they did that on purpose. But I was really looking forward to seeing the actual rules of baseball being played out with these characters and just incorporating their quirks, which they kind of do that, but it's, it's pushed to the extreme, right? They actually are trying to eject players from the field and get them out to where there's nobody left to play on either team. Fine, that makes sense with the whole thing with quirks, but at the same time, I, so honestly, from Tetsu Tetsu's team and Kirishima's team, I would have, I would have imagined Kirishima would have been a catcher because he's not fast, because he has all his gear and stuff, but um, Sugar Man, mine's turned out to be a pretty good pitcher. Uh, Sugar Man was okay, but mine's turned out to be a, like a really good pitcher. I like the idea of him being able to like control the ball and make it move. That part was really cool. I liked that. I wanted to see more out of Kaminari, but we did not get that. <laughs> but that's fine. And then Shoji, Shoji having like all the bats at once. I was waiting for the ball to like go between them and it kind of did, but I liked how they tried to incorporate their quirks. Uh, Jiro had the best with the ear jack, like vibrating it back. And that kind of makes sense now because Jiro's quirk kind of functions along the same line as King, as Gang Orcas. So maybe that's why he liked her. He's like, you tried, you did your best. Like, he didn't give her the penalty. She was... And then, she, how does she repay him later on? He doesn't give her the penalty. He's just like, we can do this. We can win. And later on, Shoji's like, maybe you should just give up. And she just collapses. I'm like, oh, that's how you pay him back? No, Jiro! So, uh, that part was really good. And then Kamui Woods just cheated. I'm like, he didn't even... Like, just holding players so they can't bat. How does that even work? How does that even work? But yeah, I, I forget about Shishido, about Lion Hero. I forget about him. And having this pent up, pent up frustration with Gang Orca, I was like, what is this ship? I didn't ask for this. I, I'm, I'm, I'll take it, but yeah. Come, uh, Mount Lady and Kamui Woods are definitely a ship. They're like, they're getting it on. They're gonna have little group babies and it's gonna be adorable. I'm all for it. I would love like at the epilogue of this entire series if Mount Lady and Kamui Woods get together and had little tiny group babies. It'd be adorable. I don't know how the physics of that would work, but Kami Woods exists, so we don't need to question the physics of My Hero Academia. <laughs> but I love them as a couple in this. And I like that Jiro and Dinky get to be on the same team together. Um, the whole play of Mount Lady getting knocked out, and I like that Seto caught the ball with the tape, which is a really good use of his quirk. I was like that, I was waiting for that to be happening in the game, but then she just lands on him. And I forget that that Mineta is like terrified of Mount Lady and is just like regrets working for her. And so him just being like, the, the little music that plays, he's like, seriously? Mineta's great in this. I honestly, a lot of people hate Mineta. 
I am totally fine with Mineta, especially after finding out that he is Horikoshi's literal representation of his perverted side. Like, he has a character. Because I, I read One Piece too, and Oda in One Piece, I feel like Oda designates certain characters in the story, like Brooks, to be like, if he has like a perverted thought, or he's just like, I'm just horny on main, so let me get this out of my system. He'll have them do like the panties and like all this. And I feel like Mineta is Horikoshi's way of getting that out. And so Mineta gets a lot of hate, but I get why Horikoshi created him, and it's kind of hilarious. Um, and he's not terribly annoying. Mineta's had some... Mineta in season one, I found fine. So he's just his power is ridiculous. So yeah. So yeah, this was fun. I'm trying to think of here, like Jiro getting cheered up, the resin ball, the miracle ball. Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima are just, they're bros. I love how similar they are and how they work together throughout this. Uh, Kirishima being like one of the last men standing, I'm like, yes, please. Very reminiscent of season four where Kirishima gets to shine. I'm like, I love the team up of Fat Gum, Tamaki, and, and Kirishima. Like that team, that hero team, their agency is so good. And I love Fat Gum a lot. Fat Gum is such a cool character. I love his ability. It's great. I love that the, uh, the part that got me was that everything was going good. Everything was great. And then the part where where Shishido is like, don't worry, we'll take it back in the bottom of the third. I was like, the bottom of the third? The third is like, it, you're in a normal baseball game, you've barely begun in the bottom of the third. And usually it's like the bottom of the eighth that you're, that you're thinking the same thing. But in this case, he's like, we'll take it all back in the bottom of the third. At that point, that type of humor is my jam because it's clever enough, it knows what it's subverting and it knows what it's making fun of. And it, it's, it was just gold. And from there on, from there on, like once the players start getting taken out, like Vine collapses, Shoji asks Jiro to, to take it. He's like, and then everything, she's like, it's too much. And so Earphone Jack comes down and Orca's like, what? And then it's down to Shoji and they all get knocked out. And so all that's left, the gang Orca versus like the rest of the team. And at this point when it was just gang Orca and Kirishima, Kirishima with the bunt. From then on, when Kirishima does the bunt, I was like, I... Mwah, mwah. Like, just, it was wonderful. Because, yeah, I, watching Ace of the Diamond and realizing that, like, it gave me such a Sawamura moment where it's, like, him bunting. It's, like, you think it's going to be this big, powerful swing. And you would think with Kirishima that he's got this hardening ability. He could, like, have the force to do it. But instead, he does the bunt. And I'm, like, no, it's perfect. It fits him great. The unbreakable. And just, like, taking it all in this boop. <laughs> I just love that. Just the the boop and then him like running and he just like trots to the base like just casually and then and then Tailman gets on base and they just like they go around the bases so nonchalantly it's freaking hilarious so funny and then it comes down the wire between uh orca and shishido and them going like all out and with the the dramatic music and everything and then it gets broken up by a sonic the hedgehog villain <laughs> with a quirk and they have to go save like the money bags from rando man he really does look like grounder off of sonic the hedgehog with the drills and everything that's all i could think of but yeah and then they go back and of course they tie it and were we to expect anything less so yeah i that was really cute i I do like at the end that everybody is like, we're just done. I like Jiro and Tailman are there like, they tie him up with a string. As I was like, I've wasted my Saturday <laughs> to do this. But here's the police report. And President Mike's just having the time of his life being like, oh my God, it's a championship. It's, we didn't even make it to the fourth inning. That is the one thing I wish it would have been. I would have taken two OVAs of class 1A and class 1B against each other. I would have taken like a full two OVAs of just entire legit game and seeing how their quirks could have been used to play baseball. Like that would have been a lot of fun, but I, I will take what I can get with my hair academia. So this was really cute, but yeah, but then on the train, I like that they're all exhausted and like Tomaki, Tom, poor Tomaki, he tried so hard and then got knocked out at first. And then I was like, I'll never play baseball again. And then, yeah, we see Mount Lady without her mask on. And sit next to Fat Gum. I guess Kamui Woods didn't want to take the train. Didn't want to do it. Nope. Oh, But yeah, that was really cute. I liked that a lot. That was a fun time. So yeah! Yeah, that was a pretty simple, straightforward OVA. I imagine 
that next week with the second one, since it's going to focus, that's always the problem with ensemble episodes like this, is that they have so many characters in My Hero Academia, you literally have to focus on like two or three at once to do anything, or it's just like spread out so much, it's like spreading that butter over the toast, and I feel like... I feel like they really had to focus on just the ones that they could, like Kirishima and Jiro and uh, Shishido and Orca and then a few others. And they really didn't get... Not everybody got... Like, we didn't see Seto do a whole lot. We didn't get to see a lot with him. We didn't get to see anything with Beast. Like, just because there wasn't time. And so I almost wish they'd done two OVAs to just do a proper Class 1A, Class 1B baseball game and then seeing them get to go head to head and see like, cause you know Bakugo versus Deku. You know Deku. What position would Deku play if I'm thinking about it? What position would Deku play? Mm, I don't know if Deku would be a pitcher. Well, yeah, he could. He, he'd have the fingers. He could do the fingers. He could pitch it with the fingers. Bakugo would just make the ball explode. Surprising no one. I, my Baku Kiri heart would love Kirishima to be a catcher and Bakugo to be a pitcher. I need that battery. But then my Baku Deku would be like, okay, but Bakugo, here's the problem. Bakugo and Deku would both be pitchers. They, they can't, that battery's not going to work. So it'd be, oh, Chaka would be a great catcher because she could like float and catch the ball and like do crazy things with it. She'd be cool. Ida needs to be, Ida would need to be a shortstop. For sure. Like the keystone combo, you could have Ida and Todoroki together to be the keystone. That would be pretty cool. I would like that. And then stick like Mineta in the outfield. Sure. Um, third baseman. Like I'd have to like think of a whole lineup here of what you could do. You could do a lot of things with it. Um, but that would be like they could have done a whole thing. So it is kind of disappointing that we don't get to see like the, the possibilities there are so endless. But at the same time, it was really cute. And so I like I liked it, but I was like, now my mind is like, oh, you could have done all these different things, but what can we do? So, but I, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below and what you all thought of this. I thought it was fun. I'm really excited to see what next week is because it'll just be Endeavor and probably Todoroki, Bakugo, and Deco. So it'll be our three guys and Endeavor and maybe Burnin and seeing them like in the hero agency. I liked that part of the manga a lot. That part of the Hero Agency chapters were a lot of fun. And so I'm excited to see that expanded upon. That'll be really cool. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. <laughs> what you guys thought of this. But um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, it wasn't too heavy of things to talk about. But I now I have. Now I want to go on Discord and make like the Koshin team for My Hero Academia. So maybe that'll have to happen. So all right. But in any case, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the reaction and discussion. But uh, in any case, please stay safe. Take care. Have a great week. And I'll be back next week with My Hero Academia uh, OVA number two. Bye.